Anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. Just some of the mental health issues a growing number of people in Myanmar are wrestling with in the aftermath of the military coup. The identities of some of the people interviewed have been disguised to protect their privacy and security. May Wong with this report. Such distressing images confronted Myanmar people day and night for the last four months. Though the frequency and intensity of violence have reduced for now, many Myanmar people can't seem to get these visuals out of their minds. 21-year-old Zor, not his real name, joined the daily demonstrations initially to oppose the military coup. But those experiences have now left a haunting mark. At the time, one of the sound grenades dropped uh uh, near me and that sound is very loud and I'm always hearing that sound at the day at the day and also whenever I sleep whenever I saw, uh, I hear a singing sound I thought it, this is sound grenade or is it shooting that I memorize about that Zor says he's now having sleepless nights, losing his appetite and feeling constantly depressed. Medical professionals describe that as post-traumatic stress disorder. For example, uh, patients who have PTSD, sometimes uh, they cannot go to work or they sometimes uh, ask to uh, quit their studying or their work because that interfere the functioning in daily life. Aside from PTSD, some are fighting guilt. This 27-year-old wants to remain anonymous for safety reasons. Recently, he left his family and fled Myanmar as he felt unsafe. He soon found out he's one of those identified on the wanted list in Myanmar. Although he's feeling safer outside of Myanmar, he told me he's riddled with guilt for having left his family, friends and countrymen behind. Even though I'm right now here, like away from Myanmar, so I see what happening in country through the Facebook and other social media, Twitter. As a someone away from the Myanmar physically, I could not even to participate. As much as I want to contribute. Imagine being bombarded by such sounds and images day in, day out, and multiply that by five or even ten times. Many Myanmar citizens encounter such experiences in real life or are exposed to them via social media. Now, medical experts say it's not easy to block out such traumatic episodes, but individuals, they hope, will be able to try and find solutions in order to relax and also to calm themselves down. One suggestion, to talk about how you feel and what you're going through in order to gain different perspectives and also perhaps develop ideas on how to better cope with depression and anxiety. Some medical experts believe anxiety and depression could strike even more people as the political crisis is also exacerbating economic woes. A recent United Nations report observed how Myanmar's poverty rate could double by the start of next year, plunging almost half of the population into poverty. The World Food Programme has estimated that over the next six months, up to 3.4 million more people will go hungry in Myanmar. That's why at least one NGO feels it necessary to provide support and advice to Myanmar people who may feel helpless and not know how to deal with mental health problems having experienced the violence during the coup. Recently, it introduced weekly podcasts dealing with topics like survivor guilt and children's mental well-being in the Myanmar language with the help of a psychologist. The people have been sending us messages saying thank you for um, talking about it and even on um, a lot of people who are abroad uh, who are feeling intensely survival guilt when they listen to this podcast it's encouraging them to open up and because of the conversation that is fueling online right now around mental health I think it is making a small difference and slowly. Nanda says the programs have gone from reaching hundreds to at least least 10,000 and growing. And like the Myanmar citizens marching together to restore democracy in the country, those dealing with mental health distress should know they don't have to walk alone. May Wong, CNA, Bangkok.